So the whole city is in lockdown. And I'm stuck like everyone else in my house. And uh, I guess that's an excellent time to pick up a new hobby. I've always been fascinated by space and the endlessness of the universe. I still remember the first time I looked into a telescope and was completely blown away by the moons of Jupiter. So when the whole world went into lockdown, this was the perfect opportunity to get one myself and take my first baby steps into the universe from my London rooftop terrace. After spending many hours reading tech specs and digesting reviews, I started building my rig. For astrophotography, you basically need three things. A camera, a telescope or a lens, and a mount. In addition, you also need a decent place to shoot from, which actually brings us to my first challenge. Astrophotography in London, or really any major city, is quite hard, because all the lights from the city makes it difficult to see the stars. The area I live in is an 8 on the 9 level Bordeaux light pollution scale, meaning it basically doesn't get any worse than this. The sky is illuminated, and only a few of the constellations are actually visible. This makes finding the thing you want to shoot really hard, but also washes out your pictures, causing nasty gradients. But as one of my coworkers once said, hard constraints is what makes life interesting. So let's take a look at the equipment we have for tonight. So the camera I'm using is a Canon 80D DSLR. It's been my loyal companion for a few years now. Through a T-ring adapter, I've hooked it up to the small but beautiful Red Cat telescope, a 51 millimeter apochromatic refractor telescope with a focal length of 250 millimeters. The camera and telescope sits on a motorized equatorial mount, which slowly turns the camera to match the rotation of the Earth. That way, the stars won't move while I'm shooting, and it lets me take longer exposures. To counter the effects of light pollution, I'm using an Optolong L-Pro filter that I clip in just above the camera sensor. It's a multi-band pass filter that's supposed to cancel out specific light frequencies coming from artificial lights, such as street lamps. Tonight is going to be my very first night of testing the new photo rig. I guess I'm going to try to hook up the camera and the, uh, the star tracker to my computer and see if I can get it all set up. Come on, Windows. The software I'm using is called Nina. Nighttime Imaging and Astronomy. It's an open source program that lets me remote control the camera. Because you don't want to take pictures with the shutter because it's going to shake too much. So this is actually going to be my very first proper shoot. Um, I think the thing that I'm the most concerned about is the polar alignment. Because if you don't get that right, apparently you're not going to get very pretty pictures. For your motorized camera mount to follow the movement of the stars, it needs to be perfectly aligned with the Earth's axis of rotation. That's called polar alignment, and in the northern hemisphere, you would achieve this by precisely aiming the mount towards the north star Polaris. To help you do that, you have a small polar aligning scope here, in the middle here, so to use it, you would have to open it up. And then you would look into this little thing here and the innermost ring there is where uh, Polaris should be, so the North Star. So it will basically rotate over the year, uh, as far as I understand, uh, around the innermost ring and you have to look up where it should be based on what date it is today. The more accurate you are in setting up North, the more accurate the, 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 um, the tracking will be. It's starting to get a bit dark now and chilly. Um, Venus has just showed up over there. That's Venus. And the sun is about to set. And Polaris should be somewhere 
around there. And as soon as I see Polaris, I'm gonna start polar aligning. The moon is pretty strong tonight though. I don't know if that will mess with the picture. But the sky is amazing. It doesn't look like there's a single cloud up there. I've been struggling with some technical difficulties. First, the, the um, tracker inside that shows me uh, where the Polaris is supposed to be wasn't lit up. I managed to get that fixed. Hmm. I don't know what looks like a lens flare or something. That doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Oh, maybe I overdid it. I do see Polaris, it's just that it's way out of focus. Now I see two stars in the polar alignment scope, which is kind of weird, because I only see one star when I look up there. <laughs> Buggy software that's crashing. Now we're starting to see stars. <laughs> After a lot of hassle, finally get it polar aligned right this time got my first shot of Venus. It is Venus. It's just a little smudge. That was actually kind of cool. I mean, the pictures turned out to be crap, but I got to see the Andromeda galaxy, um, or at the very least, it's, its bright nucleus. So it's almost 1 a.m. and I think my first, very first astrophotography night is drawing to an end. One thing that was quite annoying that I need to fix for next time is that the camera kept shutting itself off all the time. <laughs> some stupid timer. Um, polar alignment took forever tonight, which is why I didn't get many shots of the, of the Andromeda galaxy. But beyond that, I'm starting to get a grip on it. Um, this is certainly not the last night I'm doing astrophotography. The day after, kind of cool, um, but what's better is that it looks like today is going to be just as good as yesterday. No clouds. Obviously this is the totally the wrong time to actually shoot Andromeda. Ideal times are after the summer, when it's actually quite high up in the sky and you can get some decent shots. Whatever. Lovely day, it has to be at least, what, 17 degrees? Something like that. So there were some um, things that kind of bothered me last night. The balance was slightly off. Also, I'm um, thinking about adding a, a deck mount and bring it up a little bit because I worry that it will hit this screw here. So one thing that I've improved from last night is the balance. I can move it freely in this direction, and I can also move it freely in that direction. And the balance is pretty much perfect. And this way I can reach any point in the sky. And when I start the motor here, it will stay fixed on that point throughout the night. And it's actually quite amazing how, how accurate it is. The longest uh, exposure I took last night was um, 240 uh, seconds, which is four, four minutes. And like, if you just put the, the, the camera on a tripod, you will start to see uh, star trails probably after 17 seconds or so. 
20 seconds definitely so the fact that it like actually can track uh, the stars up to four minutes without any correction is actually quite amazing overall I'm really really happy with this one it's a real beauty I'm really looking forward to uh, what's gonna happen tonight but before that I think I'm gonna enjoy the Sun a little bit what a day Now the only thing that's missing is a cigar. That 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 we are, but but I I heard of one of. I decided to try something new and found the Cigar Galaxy. <laughs> As you can see to the left. Now what's really cool about this picture here is that I think I actually have two galaxies in the same picture. M81 to the right and M82 to the left. So I've got the camera connected to the computer and it's starting to take pictures fed down to the computer. And the idea is I'm gonna take a bunch of them and then stack them together to get the most amount of light. Taking long exposures introduces the unfortunate side effect of noise, whether from the atmosphere or imperfections in the camera. To minimize noise, a core idea in astrophotography is to take as many pictures of the same thing as possible and then stack them on top of each other. As the noise is random, it will then be spread out and reduced, while your object will remain unchanged. Nina will let me automate the whole process. For example, I can tell it to take a picture every three minutes. I've set it to take 100 light frames. It's estimated to be ready at 3 a.m. So I'll go down, and I'll sleep for two hours, and I'll come back up. It's now 3.30 a.m. and I've taken a hundred pictures and uh, it seems like I'm actually in luck because the sky just changed and you might be able to see a bunch of clouds who just came in uh, and they just now covered the sky including the galaxies and we pretty much got done. So what I'm doing now is I've put on the lens cap and now with the lens cap on I'm taking uh, 33 uh, so-called dark frames and the idea basically is to get pictures that we can use to calibrate and uh, reduce the systematic noise. I've also taken bias frames which is another way of calibrating the camera. They're gonna take about an hour to take so I'm actually just gonna leave the camera S uh, standing here um, and go to bed I get to sleep and then hopefully I'll be able to stack them up and get one really nice and crisp image I'm very excited um, to see what the uh, what the picture is gonna come out like good night so it's 730 and I wake up because it's raining. And of course I had all the equipment standing outside there. No! So I got um, nine, nine flats compared to 33 of the other types. Um, and I guess that'll have to do. <laughs> Cause now the camera is not working anymore. Um, I'm gonna dry it out over the day, but I've started the stacking now and I have a total integrated exposure time of two hours, which should be pretty cool. If I haven't screwed up too much, it should be a pretty nice picture. Meet the Cigar Galaxy to the left and Bode's Galaxy some 100,000 light years further to the right. These distant worlds just about to crash into one another 
are 11 million light years away from our own galaxy. They're outside the local group, but still some of our closest neighbors in the Virgo supercluster. And I found them just northwest of the Big Dipper. You can just barely notice that the cigar galaxy has an active galactic nucleus. That is, its central supermassive black hole is in a feeding frenzy. I'm quite happy with how my first extra galactic photo turned out. So, it started raining in the morning, so it just kind of stopped working. I turn it off and I turn it back on and nothing happened. And my laptop stopped charging and started complaining about the keyboard not being attached. Didn't seem too good actually. Now though that the camera's dried up, um, it starts fine, so it should be good. Um, I think the charger for the laptop is busted. Um, luckily I have another one, a USB-C one, that while it doesn't charge the battery, it lets it run off of grid power. So I should be able to collect some more nice shots tonight, if I'm lucky. And uh, I haven't yet decided if I'm gonna go for the Pinwheel Galaxy or the Whirlpool Galaxy. I guess we'll have to see. Probably the world hole. Here we go again. 